Now, in just a few weeks, voters will have a very important decision to make about who should be the next senator to replace outgoing Senator Jeff Flake. And joining us is Republican candidate for Senate, Congresswoman Martha McSally. A retired military officer and combat pilot serving in Congress from Southern Arizona since 2015. Thank you for being here, Congresswoman. Good we morning. Appreciate it. Credit where it's due. We asked you and your opponent for an interview on 12th today. Uh, the cinema campaign has not responded yet. You are here. We appreciate it. Thank I know you. voters appreciate the opportunity yeah. to hear from you directly. And first, the big headline overnight we've been talking about. So this Thursday is the day Supreme Court nominee John Kavanaugh and his accuser will answer questions to the Senate Judiciary Committee. The allegation of sex assault by Christine uh, Blase Ford involving Mr. Kavanaugh when they were teenagers. It's been well reported. Kavanaugh denies it happened. There's a long list of people in Kavanaugh's life and career who vouch for his character and integrity. A second woman has been reported over the weekend in an article by The New Yorker. She is accusing Mr. Kavanaugh of sexual misconduct at a party when they were both freshmen in college. She acknowledged there are gaps in her recollection of events. It's uncorroborated by witnesses. John Kavanaugh's spokesperson denies that he was at this party and says it did not happen. So here we are. Would you support an immediate postponement of the proceedings so that the FBI can give him the chance to conduct an investigation into witnesses of both of these allegations? Uh, well, they've been working uh, really hard to make sure that uh, that the accuser, Dr. Ford, uh, her, her voice is heard and that the process is also fair. And so this hearing on Thursday is a result of that. I think that is an important step that the Judiciary Committee has gone through. And these other allegations really just came out. So I think we need to get a lot more information uh, on, the, on the path forward. And I think in general, everyone should have a tone of respect uh, and fairness for all parties involved. You know, you have a unique perspective on this because you came out and talked to the Wall Street Journal about abuse that you endured in high school from, what, was it a track coach? Yeah, I'm a track coach, yeah. And so when you hear stories like this, especially with the president who tweeted out that she should have come out with this the second that it happened, I, I read in the article that you said it took you a decade what, what's your perspective when it well, comes to that? Well, just to clarify that, I did tell two people at the time, uh, one of which went to the school and got him immediately fired. Um, and so that was also in the article. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, look, a lot of people who have not been through this, oh, thank God they've not been through this, right. uh, you know, don't understand that, uh, you know, a lot of us don't immediately go to law enforcement. And um, many, many women and some men have been through experiences like this. So let's have respect for that, but let's also have due process and fairness. You announced over the weekend an agreement to debate Democratic opponent Kirsten Cinema October 15th. So it sounds like your campaigns are on different pages here. She issued this statement. I want you to respond. She said if Congresswoman McSally were serious about debating, she would show up at the Arizona Republic PBS debate October 15th and the Arizona Public Media debate on October 16th with Kirsten has already accepted. Congresswoman McSally appears intent on avoiding debates so she doesn't have to answer for her harmful record <laughs> on Social Security, Medicare, and jeopardizing coverage for pre-existing conditions. Give me a break. You just spent a bunch of time uh, with uh, attacks, ridiculous attacks by her. We're working with the uh, campaigns. We'd ask that she would seriously start negotiating with us about these debates. It's really important for Arizona voters to hear from both of us the full background of our records and what we've done with our lives. Uh, me wearing the uniform for 26 years, uh, flying in combat 325 hours in the 810 Warthog, uh, serving our country, six deployments to the Middle East and Afghanistan, uh, while she was protesting us in a pink tutu and depicting us as if we were the terrorists. Uh, she's got a really difficult record and uh, she's playing games with this. We are going to debate uh, and the voters deserve to hear from both of us and ask difficult questions based on her reinvented past. And if you look at my record, even since we've been in Congress, I mean, I've gotten 20 bills passed through the House. I've gotten four signed into law, you know, fast tracking our veterans for jobs at the border, allowing our World War II female veterans to be at Arlington, uh, saving the A-10 Warthog, really important infrastructure projects. I mean, we both have records uh, in our past, what we've been passionate about and fought for. Uh, and we need the voters to really see that full record because this is the 12th senator in our history that Arizona be picking it's consequential and I really look forward to debating and having her stop playing these political games and when this debate happens yeah in your opinion what what do you want to focus on because you guys are so different on so many issues yeah what would you like people to hear 
I think people want to know why you've, what you've done with your life, why you've done what you've done with your life, what motivates you, you know, why you even want to be in the Senate. And again, for, I, to speak for myself, I left home at 18 to go to the Air Force Academy. I lost my dad when I was 12. Uh, my mom was a single mom with five kids, uh, you know, a public school educator, uh, looking for opportunities. And I chose to serve in the military, put my life on the line for our country, fought for women and girls to include, you know, stopping the Pentagon, making our service women wear burqas. I mean, look at what I've done with my life. Uh, look what I've done since I've been in Congress, being effective, actually getting things done, voting for your tax cuts, securing the border, supporting our military. And the contrast with my Green Party activist uh, opponent, uh, and we also have another Green Party candidate on the ballot, and all three of us should debate, by the way. Uh, her protesting our troops, advocating to shut down Luke Air Force Base, deep cuts to our military, advocating for Johns over victims of child prostitution. These things are real uh, in her past, and she has to explain them. I want to end with a couple photos here. You, it's been well recorded that you, uh, you're a triathlete, marathon runner. You are passionate about wellness and yes, exercise. I am. Yeah. Uh, we have a, a problem in this country of obesity and, and wellness, really. Yeah. Can do government do a better job uh, of helping us be healthier? <laughs> well, I, look, I think... Where to start? I, I look at it like <laughs> individual responsibility is a key part of it, right? I mean, uh, it, people need to take care of themselves. And for me, uh, fitness was always a part of my way of life. I mean, I just, you know, b back when kids used to play outside when they were kids, you know, street hockey and basketball and those types of things, or tag. Uh, but for me, it's important for physical health, spiritual health, emotional health, uh, for me to be exercising. And my hope would be that, you know, individuals would see the importance of that. Uh, the government is not responsible for telling you to get up and set your alarm earlier to get up and go work out in the morning. You know, certainly uh, people can have information and make good choices, uh, but this is really all of us uh, together realizing we are going to be better as families and individuals if you are well, both physically, mentally, you know, spiritually. And for me, you know, fitness is a really important part of that. And it's interesting to look at your background and see how much you live up to that. Congressman McSally, thank you so much for being thank here. You. Really appreciate appreciate thank you. Really appreciate your time. All right. For your <laughs> and uh, enjoy. Uh, I know you're you're very busy, so we appreciate you stopping. Hey, look, yes. it's 16 days till people start early voting, so really looking forward to it. This is important. Right around the corner. Up at 255 to get up here. So we really appreciate it. Arizona. Yes, that is not easy. All right, Vanessa, we're going to send it over to you.